that, that you know, issue. Let's property talk about rights. property rights huge is issue. a huge mm -hmm. issue. Absolutely. And let's just spend a couple minutes on that one Great. because I find this issue absolutely mm -hmm. appalling. Mm -hmm. The state of Minnesota passed a law, thank you, Tim Pawlenty, passed mm -hmm. a law that we, the state of Minnesota would get 25% of their energy by renewable, mm -hmm. by renewable sources, mm -hmm. renewable energy sources by 2025. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have seen, you know, open your paper, turn on your radio, turn on your TV and you'll hear about another uh, wind turbine uh, mm -hmm. farm. You'll hear about a, a, a solar factory being built in the state of Minnesota. Some, some form of alternative mm -hmm. energy being yes. implemented. And it's only happening because government is forcing it to happen. So in the case of wind power, the wind energies came in, they got all these nice subsidies and tax breaks from the state of Minnesota in and the federal government. In a major way, I hear that it's a million dollars per of subsidy per wind turbine. Per, and they're 400 feet tall. Per 400 foot industrial wind turbine. Right. And, and they yes. pick these, um, they, they don't happen around the cities, of course, because there are so many people around mm -hmm. the cities. They pick Goodhue County, or I think there's mm -hmm. one up near Stearns County. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch right in Iowa and in, in Wisconsin mm -hmm. as well, with the, which got there in the same sort right. of way because government mandated it yes. to be there. So now, the, the when they passed that that law and Tim Pawlenty signed it into law, mm -hmm. there, they said, okay, um, counties, you can set your own setbacks. If you determine that you want to have a larger setback than what the state of Minnesota has, we grant you that authority. So Goodhue County came in and they That's said, exactly what they whoa, did. guess what? This is awesome. We don't mind putting windmills up. It might be a good idea if some of the farmers want it on their land, but we want the setback a half a mile. Mm -hmm. And the Public Utilities Commission came in and said, too bad, Goodhue County. No, it doesn't matter what you want. It, it can't be that way. So yes. the Southwest Metro Tea Party has been phenomenal in helping some of these property owners stop this. Yeah, we, we, definitely, we definitely have. Um, the Public Utilities Commission is an appointed commission. It's a non-governmental you know, agency, and they have... Uh, they, they have overruled the local govern, government ordinance. And um, that is all that the people of Goodhue were looking for was a reasonable setback. They dismissed the threat of stray voltage, the potential health risks mm -hmm. um, on the future of, uh, you know, the future of residents there. There's, there's, it's so, it's so An unelected board Un came in and yes. said the state law can be ignored mm -hmm. and we can overrule the state mm -hmm. law and tell this county yes. how big their setbacks mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. It's appalling. Yes, it, it really is. The, the threat is great. And the more people that find out about what is happening to Goodhue, the more people realize that this is another overreach in many ways of the government and that their personal property rights and rights are being violated. And this could happen in any community, not specific to wind, of course. You know, most of us, I never gave the thought of um, the threat of wind energy, of course, because I live in the Twin Cities. But it isn't until you hear the plight and the fight of these good, many of, many of whom are farmers, landowners, they've had land in their family since the Civil War, since before Minnesota became a state. And now they are fighting, fighting against this. The tactics by which the big wind comes in and signs contracts and then silences those property owners who signed contracts so that neighbors can't talk to neighbors about what they, what agreements they have entered into until suddenly these 400 foot wind turbines, that's the size of the Fauché Tower, literally in your backyard, you know, with the flicker, you know, if you could see the movies as the turbines are going around and the sun and the flicker with every turn in the homes, you know, it's, it's really disturbing. But the wind people mm -hmm. give them blackout blinds. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, right. And that's right. supposed so, to solve the problem. Yes, well, yes, the, these, these people's happiness is definitely be, being affected by this. And this is just one of the issues that, you know, we the people of the Southwest Metro Tea Party and a number of other tea parties throughout um, the cities I know of specifically have, um, have definitely weighed in on. And, you know, there are a lot of other 
other things that we've weighed in on as well. But yes. Well, another issue over at the Capitol, I believe you were fighting hard against Obamacare being implemented in the state oh, yes. of Minnesota. Oh, yes, absolutely. In fact, Twyla Braze, uh, president of Citizens uh, Council for Health Freedom, has been, uh, she's a friend of Southwest Metro Tea Party. She's spoken to us. She is such an expert. She has warned us, rightly so, against exchanges. Mm -hmm. And our group was very, very active and engaged on that issue specifically. That we, was one of our victories this past mm -hmm. legislative yes. session. Uh, that was a battle that I fought mm -hmm. as well. Yes. And we're, well, I think the mm -hmm. victories were few and far between this legislative session, preventing Obamacare's health insurance exchange from being implemented in the state of Minnesota was a huge win. Yes, that was our couldn't have been done that, without that you guys. That was definitely our position: is that we don't we didn't want any part of being complicit with Obamacare because we do not want Obamacare. Hopefully, the federal government will hope. Hopefully, the the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, will rule against the the overreach of 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 government into our lives. It's you know, crazy. If, yes, it, it really is. So I'm, I'm very optimistic about that. Congresswoman Michelle Bachman was the one, actually, and, and Congressman Steve King were the two, but specifically Congresswoman Bachman was the one who took to the, the airways and highlighted the $100 billion appropriation right. that was buried deep in the bill. Um, of monies, many, many of which were already out the door, and why that would why that would not have been re completely repealed sooner, and a part of all of these discussions as of late um, is really inexplicable. The majority of the American people do not want Obamacare. Still, do not 63 want percent. Obamacare. Sixty-three percent. Sixty-three percent was the last this poll was I saw. Most definitely, you know, when I think about the level of activism from. Really, my my first trip to Washington D.C. We were there 24 hours to be there for only five hours. <laughs> we were there for the rally, and then we called on the Blue Dog Democrats at that time to do our very best to convince them that this was not the way to go. And of course, in the dark of night, led by Nancy Pelosi, they ruled, and I'll use that word, against the will of the people. Mm -hmm. It was really despicable. And this is something we can never forgive and, and we will never forget. And we will continue to fight until that is that is repealed. I will never forget Nancy Pelosi walking mm -hmm. across the, the the lawn at the Capitol, holding Absolutely. that giant gavel. Absolutely, me either. Me Talk either. about mocking mm -hmm. the American people. Yeah, a yeah, abs absolutely. Well, um, we've we've got her number and the number of the uh, the, the Democrat um, run at the time, um, no longer uh, because of the Tea Party. You know, the Tea Party uh, weighed in nicely in the November elections, the yes, past they November did. elections. And, you know, we the people have really raised our voices. And um, it's very And you're not done inspiring. by a long shot. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're just beginning. We're absolutely beginning. You know, you started to mention about our Tea Party and how often we meet. And, you know, we, we do meet every single week. And our, our membership has been growing um, by the week. We're attracting from all around the 11 county area number of people that come to our Tea Party meetings are coming because they're looking and watching because they want to start a Tea Party in their neck of the woods. And Mara and I are also co-founders of the statewide coalition North Star Tea Party Patriots. And one of our objectives and goals is to support and then inspire the launch of a Tea Party in every community throughout the state. You know, we're doing a great job of connecting those Tea Parties that are out there right now. Uh, with one another, um, there's so many ideas. You know, there's there's no reinventing the wheel here. We don't need to do that. Um, we can just pick and choose. You know, we're all independent. This is a grassroots movement. Right. We can do whatever we want to do with with our group, and we're really looking to inspire the and support the launch of a tea party and and we every have community. many mm -hmm. different communities have their tea party. Yes, have a tea party whether yes. it's Rochester or yes. Malacca and, or and, and Mankato and there's a great tea party in the North Metro and and others that are looking to pop up all over. I just heard about a, a Wright County tea party and am looking forward to meeting those folks who I don't think I I even know.